Hello and welcome to Vero Software's YouTube videos on using Cabinet Vision. In the last video, we successfully created a job. In this video, we're going to go over how easy it is to add walls and assemblies to the job. To start this off, let's click on the Walls tool in the sidebar. This changed the sidebar to display our wall options. These options allow us to change the wall type, dimension options, as well as hatching. For now, I'm just going to stick with the Cabinet Vision defaults and begin drawing a wall. We do that by moving the mouse cursor into the plan viewport and clicking on our first point. You can see that our options have changed once again. We can now specify our ending point's coordinates, the length of the wall we want, and the angle. As I move the mouse cursor, you can see that the end X and end Y values change. I'm going to go ahead and just use the mouse cursor to select the end point for this wall. And that's all it really takes to make a wall. You can see that Cabinet Vision automatically updated my elevation and 3D viewports with the changes that I made in my plan viewport. Let me go ahead and draw a couple more walls to make a U-shaped section. Well, now that was pretty easy, but we have a very small room here. In fact, it's more like a closet than a room of any kind. Let's fix that by making all of the walls 12 feet long. Since we want to edit these walls and not create new ones, we need to get to the Select tool. You can see that my line tool is what is currently selected. To change this, we can do one of many things. We can either click on the Select tool in the ribbon bar. Another option is to right-click in the workspace and click on the Select command. Or we can just press the Escape key on our keyboard. Now that we're in selection mode, we can freely select any walls that we need to edit by just clicking on them with our mouse cursor. With the walls selected, we can click on the Length box and enter the value we want which would be 144, and press the Enter key. Now, what happened? Well, we changed the wall length to 144 inches, or 12 feet. This pushed the wall number 1 up, along with all the walls that were attached to it. Since we can't see the other walls anymore, I'm going to zoom out so that we can see them again. I could use my mouse wheel to zoom out, but I want to do it the easy way by clicking on the All button in the Ribbon Bar's Zoom group. Since we can see all the walls again, I'm going to select wall number 2 and change its length as well. Let me stop here to explain a little something though. The last box we selected was the length box, right? Since we did that, we don't have to select it again. All we have to do is start typing on our keyboard, and Cabinet Vision will automatically fill in the last selected box with the typed information. Now we can just press the Enter key and the wall will change length to 12 foot as well. Now let's do the same for wall number 3. To pretty things up, I'm going to center the room. I just need to click on the return button to exit the wall editor, then click on the pull down in the modifications tool in the ribbon bar and select center room. Excellent. Now we have a set of walls that we can actually work with. Now I'm going to show you how easy it is to place an object on a wall. First, let's click on the objects button in the sidebar. This displayed all of our object libraries in the sidebar. Each library contains many objects that can be placed on a wall. Just for an example, let's place a standard base cabinet on wall number 2. We can do this by first clicking on our Custom Cabinets Catalog. Then we will click on the Base Cabinets category. And finally, we will just click and drag the STD Base object from the library to wall 2. With the concept that I just explained, I'm going to create a quick room full of cabinets. Normally this might take a minute or two but through the power of movie magic, I can speed things up a little. You can see that a simple set of drag and drop operations can be done to make a simple kitchen like the one shown here. Before we go any further, let's save our job. This is good practice to get into, no matter what software you're using. You've seen how simple it was to create a few walls as well as placing a few cabinets. Let's go ahead and create a new room so that we can go over some of the extra details to creating walls. For this portion of the video, I'm going to maximize the plan viewport so that I have a little more room. So, to recap, we saw how easy it was to draw a wall, or multiple walls, and place objects on those walls. There are a few more things I want to go over about drawing walls before we finish up here though. First, watch me draw another set of U-shaped walls again. Notice that I'm drawing the walls in a clockwise direction. The direction with which you draw your walls determines where the face of the wall is placed, as well as the automatic dimension lines. Let's see what happens when I draw the walls in a counterclockwise direction. 
You can already see that the face of the wall, as well as the automatic dimension lines, are reversed. This is important to remember when you're building your walls. So far, in this video, we've been using the line tool to draw our walls. This means that each time we create a wall, we will have to click twice, once for the start of the wall, and once for the end of the wall. This is great if we only have to draw one wall. But what about our U-shaped room? It becomes a little inconvenient to have to do that each time. This is why we have the chained line tool. Let's activate that tool and try to draw our U-shaped walls again. Now that we have the first wall placed, you can see that I don't have to click again to start the next wall. I just need to drag the cursor to the next point and click. What if I wanted to make an enclosed square room? The chained line tool seems like a good idea, right? Well, it is, but we can also use the line box tool. This tool allows us to draw a rectangle that will represent our walls. Direction is slightly less important with this tool. If I draw some more boxes, you can see that unless I drag the box from the top right corner to the bottom left corner, I will get walls facing the proper direction. That covers straight walls, but what about curved walls? We can just use our arcs tool for that. Now, while there is only one button for this tool, there are more functions for us to use. I'm going to draw a small curved wall using the three points arc tool. That's one way to make an arc. As I said, there are multiple tools to do this. For now, that's enough to get started with wall creation and object placement. In the next video, we're going to take a look at editing one of those cabinet objects that we placed in the last room.